Come on, everybody say amen. 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 You may be seated if you like this morning. Who feels like you're the most blessed person here? <laughs> if your hand is not up by now, you're not even in the running. God has been good. And I think sometimes we, we think, well, I told him thanks once. How many of you know he deserves to be praised all the time? That's why the writer said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be upon my lips. And that will make it a joyful life. Cause great things to happen. I wanted to just get, delve into something this morning that is really important, and I think it's a seasonal word, because God is speaking to our heart that he's not like us. How many of God is not a man that he should lie, the son of man that he should repent? Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? If God ever says anything, it's a done deal. Amen. If God ever makes a promise, he will always do it. Would everybody say this word with me? He doesn't forget. God has never forgotten anything except your past sin. Well, he chose to forget. And sometimes in the timing of life, we have felt at times that people forget. Have you ever had people forget you? Anybody? Oh, I forgot. I was supposed to be there for dinner. I, I forgot I was supposed to come over. I forgot. People can do that. God doesn't do it. Listen, even though it seems like he forgets, he's always right on time. Everybody say he's always right on time. Uh, it's very important. We look in Genesis 40 for a moment, but then I want to get into the part of this that's is going to cover the whole base of what I want to say a lot in a few minutes. There's times in life that we don't know even if God has remembered the serious things in life. Most of you know. How many have heard the story of Joseph, the boy that was the coat of many colors? How many know the boy that was sold out, his brothers, the patriarchs of Israel, the tribes of Israel, forefathers? His older brothers hated him. And it's really hard if you're the younger brother and your older brothers despise you. It kind of messes with your life. Can you imagine being the one that has a baby brother and they both came from the same mama, from the, the you know, the daddy loved this one, daddy loved this mama, and, and now we got all these other kids. But my brother and I are the ones that daddy really wanted. And then you got ten brothers that hate you and despise you. I can't imagine having ten people hate you. And there's something significant about the story of Joseph. It's a symbol of a Savior because in all the types of his life, he is a type of Christ, the Savior of humanity. And, and it's, though it's a natural salvation, it's very important. Just to run down what took place so you understand this this morning. Can you imagine Joseph having on this code and he knows his brothers won't even talk to him. The Bible said they couldn't even speak peacefully to him. Isn't that a horrible feeling when you get around people and they just snub you like, man. And they'll walk to the other side of the room so they don't have to tell you or smile. Anybody ever had that happen? I didn't say, did you do it? I said, have you had it happen to you? And it, it bothers me, but I realize how valuable this message is. Joseph is called of God. He's still just a young boy, and the father is still showing him extra special favors. Don't ever do that. Don't ever have a special child. How many know it'll hurt them in the future, and it'll help their brothers or sisters to despise them? But you got to understand that as a young boy... Daddy sends him out to the fields to find the brothers that are doing all the work. And when he gets nearby, they look at him and they say, you know what? There's that boy that had those weird dreams and he thinks we're going to bow down to him and those dreams are going to come to pass. That boy thinks that's going to happen. That ain't going to happen. I'm not bowing down to my brother. I don't like him. I hate him. And so the Bible said we are going to kill him and then we're going to find out about the dream. How many of you know if God gives a dream, you can't kill it? If God gives you a dream, you may forget the details, but God remembers. I want you to get that word in your spirit. God always remembers what he promised. We're flesh. We forget at times, and it's just natural. But God deliberately remembers his promise and his word. And I want to make this statement because sometimes we don't know it as we should. Sometimes God causes people to forget so that his timing can be accurate. Have you ever had somebody forget and you didn't realize till later, if they had remembered, then my life would have been messed up. If they had remembered, then my life would have changed. Everything works together for the good. Every detail in your life is to benefit you. Whatever happens is not bad. It may look good, bad, smell bad, feel bad for a moment, but all things are working together for the good. There's a reason why you go through you understand the writer said, if I had not gone away, I would not know the blessing and the favor of God. And the Bible said, we learn obedience through the things we suffer. 
I hate that, but don't you know it's true? There's things that we don't like it to be that way, but we know it benefits our life. Joseph is the boy that when the brothers see him, can you imagine all your older brothers grabbing you, stripping off your royal robe, your coat of many colors that shows favoritism? They rip it up, and then they throw your naked body in a pit, and they realize we're going to leave him here to die. And all of a sudden, something happens that would have been the end of his life. He could have been buried in that outdoor tomb, if you will. Nobody would have found him forever or a long, long season. And the Bible said one of the brothers that owed his daddy because he had messed with daddy's uh, private things, the Bible said he came and said, we can't kill the boy. But the Ishmaelites are coming. Our uncle and his family's coming. How many of this thing's a family thing? And the Ishmaelites are coming, and they said, we'll sell our brother to the Ishmaelites and make a slave of him. I want you to get the picture of this. Can you imagine being in a pit, looking up, and seeing your brothers laughing at you? They're eating, and you're not getting anything. They hate you so bad, and they make it manifest that they hate you. Have you ever felt forgotten? Have you ever felt like you were in a pit, and nobody knew you were there, and didn't care if they did know you were there? But I want you to say it again, but God remembered him. God's got a thousand ways to set you free. I want to say that again. God's got a thousand ways to set you free. They pulled him out of the pit. They sold him. Now he's feeling even worse because he doesn't have his royal robe that was his connection with his father, and he doesn't know the future. (laughs) Look at me. On the back of the camel or whatever that's taking him into Egypt, the next country, as a slave, would you feel like maybe, what about those dreams? I just need to forget those dreams and try to survive. But he didn't do that. God remembers what you forgot. I want you to get that in your spirit. God remembers what you forgot. He doesn't have his robe. He's probably dressed with some kind of a rag, and he's on his way to be a slave in another country. Gets to the other country, and all of a sudden, he starts working with all of the gifting that's in his life. And when he begins to work, God gives him favor. How many of you know God remembers you? I want you to listen closely. If God gives you a dream, every day God watches over that dream to make sure every detail of it will happen and take place. He never forgets what he said. And he values you so much that he gave his own son to lay down his life to make sure you know he will always remember you. I have been forgotten of people, but I've never been forgotten by God. I've had people remember me, and it was a celebration. But God remembers me every day. He remembers me to bring breath into my nostrils. He remembers me to put food on my table. He remembers me as I travel to keep the truckers from knocking me off the road. He's helped me a thousand times in ways I cannot even take time to describe. That's why I can't say thanks enough for all that he has done for me. But I want to tell you today on this day, I want you to realize God is a God of remembrance. He's a God that knows what he said to you and he knows how to put back together what the devil has taken away. The Bible said God gave him favor in the house of a man named Potiphar. He was so in touch with Potiphar, this wealthy man. The Bible said that Potiphar didn't even know what he owned any longer. He didn't even worry about his money. He didn't worry about his accounts. He simply knew the bread that was in his hand while he's eating. Why? Because this young man that had been a slave and had two dreams that God is watching over has such favor that he not only blessed his life to keep him alive, but God blessed Potiphar's house because he allowed the man with the dream to be blessed of the Lord. I want you to know this. If you're blessed of God, everybody around you will benefit. How many of you know everybody around you is blessed because of you? Well, if that's not happening yet, start that out today. How I many know everybody ought to just rejoice? When the door is open and you walk in, everybody ought to say, Look, they're here. Amen. And if they don't do that, work on yourself. Okay. The Bible said, After a while, as it would happen, Potiphar had a wife that fell in lust for Joseph and she kept trying to allure him. And the Bible said that Joseph told her, I can't do this sin. Because it would not be sinning just against you and Potiphar, my boss, but I would be sinning against God. You know what God caused him to do? To remember the dreams and the relationship. Look at me. Nothing is worth throwing away your relationship with God. 
There's nothing more valuable than the relationship with God. How many know everybody's probably done that for a moment? We've all failed. But how many of the Lord wants to restore us? And listen closely. I every day have made up my mind. I'm going to remember what God has done, and that will let me celebrate what he's still doing. If God has brought me this far and I'm here, he's going to celebrate with me through the forever future that I have before me. And I love this because even though she came and grabbed his robe this robe that he had that was not the one his father gave him, but it was from the favor that God had placed upon his life. His new clothes were because God gave him favor, because God remembered the dreams and that this boy one day is going to bring salvation to the nation. God never forgets what he promised. God will never fail what he promised. Say it out loud. God remembers. I like the word remember. It has the connotation that we are members, but we've, have you ever been dismembered? Have you ever lost, a, uh, one of our guys almost lost a leg and another one almost lost some fingers? Those are dismembering things. But the doctors were able to put them back, sew them back together, and they are remembered. Everybody say remembered where they were dismembered. Remember means putting back together. How many of you have some friends and family you'd like for God to remember them or bring them back into relationship with you? It doesn't matter where they are, what they did, what's happening. God can restore membership in families, in church, and in every area of your life. Aren't you glad that God has blessings in mind for us? I look at the story and I kind of put myself in Joseph's shoes. I, I've been for several years now away from my father. He's the one that gave me the connection with God. I understood he's the greatest man of God in the world today. His name is Jacob. His name is Israel. That's my daddy. But my daddy got mad at me when I started giving a dream he didn't understand. How many of you know, even called and anointed people can get confused for a moment? Right. Gifted people can mess up. Right. Amen. Am I right? right? How many of you are gifted and you never messed up. Okay. And the Bible said that he literally slipped out of his robe and he left it in Potiphar's wife's hand. And he said, I can't do this. Why? Because he remembered the dreams. If you remember the value of your calling and your dreams, you won't bail out so easy. I just wish we had more people that would leave their coats behind somewhere. Quiet in this room. Did you hear me? Can we all say it together? It's not worth it. Do you know your greatest strength in continuing to be faithful to God is when you remember God? And you remember your salvation and you remember your covenant. How many know it's easy to forget heaven and eternity? How do we forget eternity? We're only going to be here for a second. A few days ago, I was, I was in California. A few days ago, before that, I was born. A few days ago, 74 years ago, I, I got to Ohio about 35, almost 40 years ago. How many know it? time flies by? And you know I can testify about what God has done since we've been in Ohio. I can testify and celebrate what God has done and what he's continuing to do. But can I just tell you this? It's not over yet. God has been faithful to me every step of the way. He's brought the most precious and wonderful people in the world into my life. Can I get an amen right there? I'm talking about you, so give me an amen right there. And what's beautiful about it, God has a purpose and, and a plan for every detail. And this is what I love. When Joseph walked out of that room, he knew that now she's going to tell her husband he did me wrong. He tried to molest me. He did all that. And the Bible said that even though he was cast into prison to cover the shame of something he did not do, it's hard enough to go through suffering for what you did wrong. It's even harder when you didn't do anything and you're blamed for things you didn't blew in call things that you're not. How many of you know you still have to remember that God has called you and it doesn't matter at times what anybody says about you. It matters what God says about you. I don't want anybody in that. When I stand before the Lord, I don't really care. I love you, but I don't really care that you stand and say, oh, Pastor Don, I love you. That's wonderful too. But I'm waiting for the Lord himself to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. In other words, begin your eternity because I remembered your faithfulness. People may remember your good deeds. God doesn't forget one detail of anything you've ever done. He remembers. Kathy and I were talking last night about our producer's father, Charles Southall. He sent me a little note, and it didn't have a name on it. It just said, here's the America's number one preacher, pastor. So I text back, I don't have a clue. How many of you can get all kinds of stuff you don't want to open? And he said, no, it's Charles. I just wanted to wish you a happy birthday. And I said, Kathy, you know why he thinks that of me so highly? You know why he said that? Because when his daddy is dying unsaved, they asked me to go and pray, and I won him to the Lord hours before he died. So it's not who you are. It's the benefit 
that you brought to the family. They're very dear to me. Most of you know the Brainerd family. But how many of you realize he feels like that because of something? You know why? He remembers. He remember, He said something at one of my birthday celebrations, I think when I was 60. And it was a kind of an amazing way he said it. He said, you know, Pastor Don's a little guy. <laughs> he's small. But he said, in my eyes, he stands tall. How many of you want people to think kindly of you? Amen. How many of you want to be remembered Amen. for doing something good? Yes. How many know if we're going to get that in the future, we have to do things notable now? Right. Don't be asking me to preach your funeral and not have anything to say. <laughs> I don't want to just say, well, there they are. <laughs> people often say, you send them to heaven or hell. I don't send anybody anywhere. Everybody already knows. Am I right? But I want you to listen closely. God remembers all of your sacrifices. He remembers your love and your faithfulness. Joseph is now in prison. Say it unfairly. But he doesn't lose his vision. He's an example for all of us. Can you imagine years in a rat-infested prison? Prisons today are terrible to be in. It's horrible time. But it's nothing like being in a cave underground where your survival is all you get. How many of you understand? He's there all alone. He doesn't have daddy. And all he has is the memories of brothers that hate him. And he has memories of a, of a woman that lied about him. And he's suffering unfairly. But the Bible said that one day God caused something to happen. And he made Joseph the man in charge of the prison. You ought to be in charge of even the bad times of your life. That's tweetable. Do we still have tweet or have they made that communist? Everybody say out loud, I want to be a blessing even when I'm hurting. People don't notice you how you act when everything's okay. They watch your countenance when you're going through unfair times. Have you ever been through unfairness? If you haven't, you probably will. Prepare yourself to act right. I mean, we don't throw away God just because we get hurt. We don't give up on the Lord and have fits just because people hurt us. God has never failed you. And I love this so much because now, after a long period of time, they throw a couple guys in, that are royal guys from the palace, they throw them into the prison, and they're all upset. Well, I, you know, why am I in prison? I was at the right hand of the Pharaoh. And all of a sudden, the Bible said one morning, they both woke up and they said, hey, we had a dream last night. And they said, um, you know, we, we don't know what it means. And Joseph said, tell me. My God can give me an interpretation. So the first guy, he, he was the butler, and he gave the dream. And Joseph said, well, this is what's going to happen because this is the word of the Lord to you. You're going to get your job back, and God's going to restore you. And the other guy looked at him, and he said, hey, I'm the baker. I had a dream too. Tell me about the interpretation of my dream. He said, well, tell me what it is. And the Bible said when he got finished, Joseph said, your dream is not so good. You're getting ready to have your head cut off. How many wish you hadn't dreamed sometimes <laughs> or told somebody your dream? But it did come to pass. The one was killed, and the butler got his job back. And as he's leaving, listen closely, as the butler is leaving the prison, Joseph, the man of God, called of God, that's been faithful through horrifying things already, he's still faithful, he's still obedient, but he's helping God out a little bit by saying, uh, hey, butler, when you get back to the Pharaoh, would you tell him there's a, a Hebrew that's in prison unfairly, and he interpreted you? Would you remember to do that? And he said, oh, yeah, I'm going to go back, and I'll remember that. And everybody said out loud, he forgot. Well, how could you forget the man that gave you the interpretation, got your job back? We've all done that. But I want you to notice, two or three years later, he's still waiting for somebody to remember him. Then the Bible said the Pharaoh had two dreams. And he's telling all of his soothsayers and magicians and all the people, and they said, we don't have a clue what to tell you. And the butler said, hey, wait, 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 but I remember. Say that word, I remember. You know, when you sent me to prison, it was going to kill me. Remember that? Um, there was a Hebrew in there that interpreted my dream, and it came to pass just like he told me. You need to get him to come and interpret your dreams. And the Pharaoh said, get him. And so they came down. They cleaned up this smelly boy that didn't have on the royal robes anymore. He's in prison for years, and he's smelly and stinky. The Bible said that same day he went from slavery to the right hand of the palace. The Pharaoh said, I've dreamed two dreams. And he said, well, that means God's getting ready to fulfill these in a very special way. He said, what's going to happen, Pharaoh, is for seven years, we're going to have more crops than we can harvest. So I want you to mound up all the corn you can or all the wheat and the grain you can like mountains without number because after that, it's going to be seven years where nothing grows. And if you don't do this thing, the world is going to starve to death. 
How many of you understand God knows the future? Say it out loud. And he remembers the past only because it's a prophecy of the future. Anybody ever go to Bloomingburg when they used to have those mounds of corn and wheat piles? Look like a little mountain out there. And I was always amazed they tried to cover it up and keep it out of the rain. That's as close as I can cause you to understand. Can you imagine all of Egypt bringing all the grain into one place and not even be able to find a way to keep it contained because they knew that the man of God had spoken a word. The next time you get ready to forget what God has told you prophetically or prayerfully, go back and remember God always remembers your prayer. And the Bible said he never says no. He never does it in a way that would hurt you. When God says no, it's only if he does say it, it's not that same meaning. It simply means not now, not this way. I've got a better plan for you. How many of you know God knows what's best for you? I've tried my best and it wasn't right. I tried to hurry God up and it didn't work. The Bible said that even though Joseph is now giving the word to the Pharaoh, God had remembered Joseph. If you look at this context and study it this week in Genesis, the closing, he simply said, it says that God remembered Joseph. Say it with me. God remembers us. All through Scripture, you need to understand those simple words, but God remembers It doesn't matter what people do. I mean, it affects you for a moment. But if God remembers you, if God remembers that he made a promise, if God made a promise and you remember that God said it and that God is going to do it, then you don't have to be afraid. I want you to notice this. The Bible said the Pharaoh looked around. He said, I need somebody that can be over all of this next seven years of bounty and somebody to dispense the grain for food and for for harvesting or for seed planting for the next 14 years. We need somebody in charge. And he looked over at Joseph and he said, would you be the man? And Joseph didn't volunteer. He was simply selected and called. Do you think Joseph knew one day he's going to stand at the right hand of the Pharaoh as the second most powerful man in the world? Do you think he saw that when he's in the pit about to starve to death when he was on the back of the camel going into Egypt as a common slave when he spent years and no he didn't understand it and you're not going to please get this you're not going to understand all that God is saying when he tells you one day your family is going to be remembered or put back together he didn't say remembered as much as he said one day your family is going to bow down one day your brothers that hate you they're going to bow down to you he thought it would happen probably quickly God is not in a hurry and that's what we hate about God he's not in a hurry and God is not like Don Young he's not hyper because God's got all the time in the world and you don't but in eternity you will how many of you understand God must really have to put up with us thinking why are they always in a hurry why do they want it right now hold the pickle hold the lettuce special orders don't upset it two minutes later if they don't get that burger right you're in such a hurry you get upset Amen? So McDonald's decided to double check it so they can double get it wrong. I'm just trying to, just my thoughts. I want you to listen very closely. This is needed right now. The butler had been in prison with Joseph, and he got a pure, powerful interpretation or a prophetic utterance through a dream, and his life was restored. For two years, look at me, God made him forget. I want you to hear that. He forgot, and he said to the Pharaoh, oh, now I remember. Do you know why? Because now's the time for it to come to pass. Two years ago, it wouldn't have worked. He could have told the Pharaoh two years ago, and there wasn't a famine coming for another two or three years, or bounty for another two or three years. Why does God delay? Because his timing is right. Anybody think God is worthy to be trusted? I mean, even when you don't like it and you have to wait. Remember that writing that said, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. You need strength? Learn to wait. We'll run. won't get weary if we wait. and Mount up with wings like eagles. Well, I want to do all that. You can't do it if you're not waiting. Everybody said, that's only for the obedient. I'm going to pray. Give me a second. God, let me remember that. How many of you know we get in trouble because of what we forget? Have you ever said, oh, now I see? God caused the butler to forget on purpose. And right on time, he caused him to remember. And this context says, and God remembered Joseph. Well, how does God forget? He doesn't. 
God is ready to put back the pieces of the dreams, remember them, or reconnect the pieces of the dreams. Everybody say, the members are coming together. When God spoke this to me this week, he said, tell my people their family members are getting ready to come back together. Oh, Brother Young, you think God will ever save him? I'm not thinking anything. I'm remembering what God remembers, and I'm praising him for what he said. Amen? Well, yeah, but I don't know. Wait, 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 wait. You remember there are two spies that came back from the promised land, and they said, we can do this. We can enter the promised land now. And because of that, God saved all their family, while the ten spies and hundreds of thousands of people had to die in the wilderness because they doubted God and they forgot that he brought them out of Egypt. They forgot that he fed them manna. They forgot that he sent quail every day. They forgot that he opened up rocks and brought rivers. They forgot. Honey, when you forget what God has done for you, you'll start worrying and fearing. And the next time you want to worry a little bit or fear a little bit, all you got to do is forget what God has said. And if you forget what God has promised, then you're on your own. I'm not on my own. I've got the greater one living, not just with with me but he's living in me and he's got great things for me can I just say it my dreams have not all come to pass I still got stuff to live for I prayed with a gentleman today uh, this this early this week in the nursing facility he had been through 10 days they went in to do a knee replacement and, and surgery on his body and they lost him three times for a total of 10 minutes it's a miracle that he revived he said, Pastor, it's a miracle. And he said, I thank God for the prayers of the people because when I went driving by your church, the Spirit said, you need to go in there and check that out. How many of you, you need people praying for you even when they don't know what they're praying about and even when they don't have the understanding? And he said, Pastor, I don't know why I had to go through that. Maybe it's because my family's going to come to church now. He said, you think it'd be worth me going through all that just to get my family into the kingdom? You shouldn't have to suffer for people to be blessed. Well, take that up with Jesus. Did he suffer so we can be blessed? He didn't go to the whipping post because he thought, I'm having a bad day. I think I'll just get somebody to beat me half to death. He did it because we needed it. Am I right? He didn't go to the cross because he was a sinner. He went because I was a sinner. He loves me. And when I forget that, I'm depressed. When I forget that, I get discouraged. I want God to scratch your brain and get your memory working again. We got too many spiritual Alzheimer's people. Forgetting the spiritual words. Am I right? How many of you want to remember the word of God? Say it. I want to remember what God has done. He that has begun the good work, he will perform it. When the Lord spoke that word, and you'll look at it and celebrate. You ought to highlight it if you don't have an iPad, if you have a paper Bible. And highlight the part that says, but God remembered Joseph. Well, why didn't God remember when he's in the pit? He did. And he brought him out. It was a symbol of death, burial, and resurrection. It's a type of the Savior. When he went into a place where he had to serve, how many of the Lord didn't come to be served? He came to serve. Am I right? He was in prison. Why? The Lord our God literally was willing to hang and to suffer and to die and be buried and on the third day resurrected again. How many of you know he deliberately wrote that about his future? He declared that. He planned that because he loves Don Emmanuel Young so much. He wanted to make sure that I don't ever forget how good he has been. Tyler's favorite song is, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. How could I forget how you set my spirit free? How many of you know we've got to learn? Learn to remember what God says. Remember and forget what God says. And you need to forgive the people that did you wrong. Even if they don't ask you. Three amens on that one. Who benefits the most when you forgive? You do. They don't even know it. And if they knew you're still mad and angry and having fits and can't sleep all night, they'd really be happy. Forgiveness benefits you. Because if I don't have a forgiving spirit, then forgiveness doesn't work well. How many of you know God has brought us from a mighty long way? The Bible said that the butler forgot what he promised, but God remembered. My mind went back over a number of years, and early this morning I was awakened, and it hit me in a strong way. And I don't like to go back to negatives, but I'm going to. When I was traveling back and forth from here at the armory, I went up to minister with uh, Brother Summerall on television and and the, the outreaches. And on my way, I got not quite there, and a gang of cars, a gang of people pulled me over. I don't know what it was. I thought, well, maybe I'm not a good driver. 
But all of a sudden, they begin to converge, and they stopped the car. After they stopped me, they stopped the car, pulled out bats and guns, and they were heading to me. So I did whatever righteous person did. I turned around and drove back the other way 90 miles an hour. Well, they caught me, and I had to turn around, and I got past all of that. They made it all the way into the, the little town, and I hid behind in the back of a truck stop in the car, and my life was saved. How many of you know, if God's got a plan for your life, you may have to help yourself out a little bit. <laughs> Don't be saying, I just got the Holy Ghost. I'm going to sit there and let him beat me to death. No. How many know if you don't like to get beaten? Drive. (laughs) Yeah, but you're in the ministry. You shouldn't have to go through all that. All those people that wrote those books, once you really believe in God, nothing bad happens. Tear those books up. In this life, you will have trouble. Amen. But the Bible said the Lord said, but I've overcome the world. So hang in there. I've literally been in services, and you, most of you knew my brother Roy. And you'll grin when I say that. We've got to have Brother Moss Older with us from the Newark Church. Listen closely. We've had people walk to us down the aisle, under Crouch's uncle's church, the grand auditorium there for the Church of God in Christ. I'll never forget on the platform preparing to sing, and all of a sudden they come down the aisle with a knife swinging it, and Brother Roy jumped off in front of me and grabbed the man by the arm. He swung him around so he couldn't cut up people, and I went in front and opened up the door. How I many of my part was always the easier part? I thought that was the baddest part when we finally got him out to the street. We're talking about 23rd and Central. If you know L.A., you'll say, yeah, I get that. We looked around, and we got a whole bunch of gangs outside the building. And I thought, "Uh (laughs) uh-oh. And the men out there looked, and they saw, they recognized what was happening, and they said, preachers, you can go back in church. We'll take care of him. Literally had to carry people out with danger in their hand and trying to destroy. How many glad we don't have to carry people out here anymore? I'm glad I don't have to worry about anybody pulling out a knife. And if we do, I've got people sitting right beside you that they have a bigger knife. (laughs) Come on, somebody say amen. I've been through situations that are unfair. In all these years of ministry, I made it. Somebody said, what's your testimony? I made it. I'm still here. It may not sound good to you, but I've been through every kind of an attack you can be. I've had all kinds of negatives take place, but I just want to celebrate. I made it. You know how I made it? Because God made me a promise and a covenant. And he said, look, Don's getting ready to go through something. I remember I made a covenant. I made a promise. And I made him a word to be, that has to come forth. And so I have to send angels to minister. Whatever it takes, God always remembers what he promised. He always remembers that you belong to him. And he is responsible for your life. Has anybody ever been through some negative times? Keep your hand up. How many of you made it? How many of you got sewed up and you made it? How many got away and you made it? Come on. I want to tell everybody in this room, every one of you that are here, you're here because God remembered you. When it could have been death and disaster or destruction or a worse situation, God remembered you. And I want to tell you today, he always will. Come on, said, he always will. I I can't even explain how many times we've been in danger. I can't even explain how many times it was like the end of it. And the Lord said, no, I remember what I said, and I want you to remember my word. The next time you get ready to doubt, stop for a moment and remember what God has said. Thus saith the Lord to me. And all through the Bible, you look at the people that God has blessed. And you look at David. He's 17 years old, and all he's got is a slingshot. All he has is faith in God. Here is a boy that remembers that God is with me. He a giant you got a spear and you got a sword you got men gathered around you to protect you from a kid with a rock and a rag but I've got the Lord on my side I remember the lion that I killed and I remember the bear I remember that God is with me so no weapon formed against me will prosper Some of you ought to say it. It's not only a promise for me, but my family. God is ready to remember and put back together. No weapon. It doesn't matter what bondage in their life. It doesn't matter how long it's been. God is going to remember you, and he's going to perform his oath to you. He's never lied. He's never failed, and he's not going to start with you. Well, my life is all tangled up. It doesn't matter. He's an untangler. It doesn't matter what it looks like. God said, I've already made a promise. Joseph, you may be sitting in the prison. 
prison. You may be at the bottom of a pit naked and people hate you. It doesn't matter who hates you. I love you. It doesn't matter what it looks like. I am the one that is on your side and I'm going to create life and I'm going to create victory. Why? Look at me. The Holy Spirit of God, God himself lives in you and he is ever mindful of every situation. I want everybody to stand and say, Lord, remember me today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to look over somebody and tell them the Lord is remembering his promise to you today. Not like he forgot it. He is simply remembering, put back together the members. There's some of you right now, every time you pray, it's for a son or a daughter or an uncle or an aunt or a cousin. You're estranged. Can't even talk to each other. The hardest thing in the world is when situations separate people. Unfair words and untimely acts keep us from the people that we love the best. Close your eyes a moment. Father, today in this room, somebody's faith has been stirred. They want to reconnect with salvation. The world has caved in on them. There's evil spirits around and they don't know how to fight them. There's threats from the doctor's office. There's threats from those that diagnose them in their emotions and their feelings. Pastors by the thousands are leaving the ministry every week because they can't fight it any longer. Something like 1,700 people a day are dying of depression because we forget that God has made a promise. I feel like saying that again. We forget that God has made a promise. What is that promise? I will never leave you. I will never forsake or abandon or let you down. Lo, I will be with you always. God is raising up a revival right now, and we're getting ready for the most pure and powerful Holy Ghost move the world has ever known. Don't be ashamed of the Holy Spirit. Be ashamed of Pastor Don if you want to. He, he dresses weird or his hair's weird. That's okay. But never diss God. Never abandon him. You don't have to understand all he's doing at all times. But we've got to trust him. If you're in this room today and you want to be a part of eternal life, you want Jesus to forgive your sins, would you just lift up your hand and say, Lord, I need this thing. I I don't fully understand how you can wash away my sins with blood that was poured out 2,000 years ago, but you said if I would call on your name, I'll be saved, and I'm calling Would you lift your hand and say, Lord, I need you, and I'm calling on you. God bless you. I'm calling on you. God bless you. I'm calling on you. Why? Because nobody can do you like Jesus. You'll never find anybody to love you like he loves you. And the only time he ever puts the word forgetfulness in his vocabulary is when it's concerning your past and your sin. Forgiveness is in this room today. Some of you right now are going to lift your hand and say, I'm going to be the catalyst for my family's salvation. Because once I accept the Lord, there are those that are going to follow me. Once I let Jesus be the Lord of my life, people realize there's been a great change in me. God bless you. The new beginning is taking place today. (sighs) Brother, I don't know if I can live it or not. God didn't ever plan for somebody to say they can't make it. You can live it if His Spirit is in you. You can do all things through the Christ that lives in you and strengthens you. The Holy Ghost is getting ready to be poured out in a way where we're going to be stronger than our weakness, stronger than our strongest weakness, stronger than our greatest temptation, strongest what wars with our mind to rob us from eternal life. God is ready to strengthen us by His own Spirit living in us and through us. For those of you who lifted up your hand, and if you haven't yet, I want you to do it. Can we all lift our hands with those that have Confess that they need the Savior. I want you to lift your hands, saints, and let's pray it together with them, our family, new family members. Lord Jesus, you ask me to come to you and just ask you to believe in you to wash away my sin, to come and live inside of me, to forgive all the yesterdays, prepare me for my future. You willingly died to pay the penalty, my penalty for sin, and I accept that gift. Thank you for forgiveness. 
Lord, they buried you. And for three days, you were conquering death, spiritual death, eternal death for all humanity. You conquered hell for every believer once and for all. And you conquered the grave. I receive the gift of forgiveness and accept you as my Lord and my Savior in Jesus' name. Passed by a number of caskets this year already. There was nobody in the casket. There was an old empty house where somebody lived. How many know when you die in Christ, you're absent from your body and you're present with the Lord? There's no graves. Everybody say, there's nobody in those tombs. The bones of the house they used to live in, yeah, but that's, they're not there. How many of you want to be absent at that day and present with the Lord? As soon as you breathe out your last tear, the breath of God blows in your face in eternal life. That's why we serve Him. That's why we live. I feel this today a different day, but if everyone would close your eyes for just a moment, and I'm going to ask you to look internally in your own circumstance. Several of you in the room, you're not enjoying your life because your family's not saved, and they're in danger. I get it. I understand that. There's that constant threat of someone not making it during the week. The testimony that was given by our sister on Thursday night, I heard a bit, a portion of it repeated to me. Losing family members too early. That's why Jesus came to stop that. He came to remember his word over us and remember us or put us back together. I feel like in this room, and I'm not saying this just with a flippant mind, I'm saying it because I feel danger. Somebody's praying for someone that is on the very edge of losing their life. Not intentionally, not deliberately knowing it would happen, but because of the influences and because of the weakness of the moment. Can we pray this together? Father, put my family back together. Not just as a sibling or a child or parents, but spiritually. Connect with Father God. Connect with your Lord and Savior Jesus. Let God put you back together on the inside and reconnect you with your spiritual family for all of eternity. There's power in this room today. There's life in this room today. There's healing in this room today. Can everybody in the room say, Lord, I believe that you love me. You spared my life so many times. And I need you to touch me right now. And Father, for the sinner that's nearest destruction, stop them. Let them remember you. Because you always remember them. And you said you would never turn anyone away. Some can be on the brink of the pit of eternal life. Some ready to make the worst choices of their life. Some ready to die. Holy Spirit, let them remember your love. We're only depressed and discouraged for the moments that we forget how much you love us and what you've done. Lord, I don't want to hurt myself while you're standing right there holding me in your arms, living on the inside. I don't want to be fearful, confused. But the power of the presence of the Lord is working strong today. Many, many times we reach out and we touch lives. But I'm feeling something strong today. I'm feeling something strong today. Just keep your head bowed a moment. Just give him some praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Christine, can I, can I pray with you for just a moment? Thank you, Lord. April, would you stand with me? I'm going to say a word to you, okay? I'm proud of you. No, 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 no. I mean that. We're all just piles of dirt. But your heart, seeing God, is so precious. And the Lord said, everyone under the shadow of the influence of your life is going to benefit not only now, but for all of eternity. It's not been easy. 
But the presence of the Lord is going to work an internal work in you today to cause you to remember that the God that made the heavens and the earth and the Christ that laid down his life lives inside of you and he will empower. And you're going to watch the changes all around you. Life is not fair. Joseph knew that when he was in the pit, when he was in the prison, when he's lied on, cheated, talked about, abused. But like Joseph, the Lord is saying to you, remember my presence and how much I love you. God said, I have already promised a divine future for you. Don't forget. Don't forget that the valleys are before you. And don't forget the mountaintops in front of you. But you're going to make it right on time to the fulfillment of your calling and your gifting. If this wasn't real to you, it wouldn't break you up. If it wasn't real to you, you wouldn't have any feelings. But right now, the Lord said he's washing you in his own blood and his own word and the water of his own promises. The details of those things and situations and circumstances that are concerning to you right now, the Lord said, I know, I know. I know all about it. I know the details better than you do, but I am asking you just to remember my promise because everything that's a part of your life is going to be blessed. Sometimes there are dis- we're detached from yesterday's connections because God has caused somebody to forget. They forgot to live right. They forgot to be faithful. They forgot to be obedient. And like the the butler, they had to forget because it wasn't time for fulfillment. And they could have blocked our blessings. But God said, I'm going to begin to restore all the years. All the years. When he talks about the canker worm and the palmer worm, he's talking about from the time we started growing. Certain parasites attack the little green thing that comes out of the ground when it's little, and when it gets bigger, other bigger attackers come. But the Lord said, I've got you in the palm of my hand, and I'm going to work these things out for my glory. We talk about anointing the physical home. Just want to declare this to you. The Lord said, as you put your foot on the door and walk in, His presence is going to saturate the walls from the ceiling to the floor, from the front to the back, from side to side, his angels are going to begin to encamp around about you. And there's no weapon formed against you and no spirit that can come to rob one more promise that God has made to you. And I release you and all that you love into the covenant that's just before you. Give you praise because the promise of God is yes and amen because we believe. I want everybody to say out loud, Lord, I do believe. Help me to remember. I forget sometimes. But you said you would help me to remember. Your word is all that matters. It's all I have. It's all I need. Because it's you. Help her take these next few steps. With greater strength. Understanding. And when things make no sense, just keep on pressing. Joseph surely didn't understand all the painful years. But he didn't throw away the covenant. And it came to pass and saved his father's house. Saved the world. You'll never know how many lives are going to be affected because of your decisions. Because of your remembering God's promise. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Can everybody in agreement say in Jesus' just name. Say it again. In Jesus' name. Can we clap our hands and give God some praise for just a moment. Thank God for you. Thank you, Lord. Come on, say it out loud. God is good. All the time. How many of you are not ashamed to say, I have some people that need God's change in their life? How many don't even know how that could possibly work? But God. Everybody say, but God that made the heavens and the earth can fix it. If he can create the stars and the moon and the planets and the fish, he can change hearts. Got to pray this again. Say it, Father, remember my house. Put back together the pieces that have walked away from you. And Father, remember my physical body. Remember the healing that's paid for. Put my body back together. He's bigger than organs that fail. He's bigger than a polluted bloodstream. Thank you, Lord. He's bigger than disappointments, anger, and frustration. Brother, it's not fair. People don't like me. Jesus said they hated me. They'll hate you. Keep on loving me. 
Because I will not allow that hatred against you to stop my promise. For I will remember my word. I will remember my word. And we stand in the covenant in Jesus' name. Cindy, will you agree with me right now? We're going to touch Tammy. Lord, she's going through a tough time right now. She's our sister. She's your child. We're asking for you to begin to remember. Remember covenant. Remember promises. Put back together what is hurt. Lord, you're bigger than the threats. And our faith is in you. God, there's some things that she looks back over and just wishes life would be more precious. But you're the one that's never walked away. Hold her tight. We just place her in your loving hands and we ask you, Lord, right now, for special divine intervention. Let her feel your presence right now. Let her feel it right now. Let her feel it right now. And God, you're working on the inside. And we just thank you for this touch. Thank you for divine intervention. Come on, somebody say divine intervention. In Jesus' name, in Jesus. Can everybody just take somebody's hand? I don't think we have to worry about getting diseased today. We're anointed. God's doing some good things for you. Okay, are you ready for it? Is it okay? Is it okay if he does it his way? Because you know you'll benefit, right? Everybody say, Lord, I agree. Don't have to understand. But your plan's perfect. I love you so much. And I receive all that you are. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. There's times in life that it just takes one match to start a forest fire. Amen? We have a barbecue grill in the backyard. Turned all the power, all the propane on, and the clicker wouldn't click. Tried to work on it, but I don't know about clickers, so I just said, well, bring me some matches. By the time I got that little match thing down in there, I lost hair all off my arm. <laughs> Everybody said, just one match, just, just one fire. And what's so beautiful about it, I'm, God's doing some good stuff. I know you've been through a tough week. Is that right if I tell you something? Did you already know? You're going to be the match that starts forest fire. People that don't understand anything about this weird, like, Spirit of God, Holy Ghost stuff, you're going to break down that wall because they know you're real. And it's going to begin to spread. The Holy Ghost is going to have its will and its way. Well, I'm afraid of all that stuff. That's what your life is made out of is the life of God. That's what the Holy Spirit is. It's the Spirit of God. It's going to begin to bring a revival that's going to bring down the walls of dead religion. It's going to bring down the confusion of the government. It's going to bring down family uh, disruptions. It's going to bring life. But that's why the battle is so strong. The enemy doesn't try to attack things and soldiers that are like David's brothers hiding behind rocks. He reaches out to try to stop the one that has the torch in their hand and the anointing of God in their life. And I want you to prepare yourself because whatever steps you take, God is saying, you're a Joseph today and I will not forget you in the unfair times and in the threatening times, but I will let you burn with a flame that others will never say, that's not real because they know it's real and they know it's brought you out of death into life and out of darkness into the light and your call for such a time as this and I release the strength of the Lord because God said you're going to be a catalyst for remembering the promises of God and the members of the body of Christ and the members of family and the members of those that are under bondage and you're going to set them free while you're all alone in the dark in your own room the Lord said I'm going to send a light and I'm going to spare lives and bring hope and freedom and a new beginning I'm working out the details of things present in in spite of the days of past things behind you. I want everybody to say, Lord, I want you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. Come on, said, fill me up. I don't have time for my own personality to control. That hasn't worked. My carnal nature to destroy me. I want your Holy Spirit to rule and reign in my life. Can we do that right now? Lift up your hands and say, Lord, fill me with your Spirit. Nothing else is going to work 
Nothing else is going to come to pass. Nothing else can make it its way effective in your life. The Lord is saying, once my children are full of my spirit, they won't be afraid to celebrate. They won't be afraid to shout a hallelujah. They won't be afraid to glorify God. They won't be afraid to laugh and they won't be afraid to cry. They won't be afraid to dance for joy. It's a time of a reviving and a time of a refreshing. And I claim the greatest move of God that this world has ever seen. Can the body say together, Lord, I do believe and I receive it. God said anybody that comes and asks for his spirit, he will never say no. Now I want you to make room for his spirit. That might mean shoving out some of your old personality, your old traits, angers, unforgivenesses, hate. Let it go. We can't mingle all the hate with the perfect love of God in His Spirit. Let it go. His Holy Spirit is what causes your salvation and your healing and your faith to grow and for your life to be effective. we got some Josephs in this room that are still in a pit. Some Josephs wondering, God, what about those dreams? God said, you take care of obedience and faithfulness to me. I'll get you into the promised land and put you back in the palace that I originally promised for you so long ago. Father, I'm asking these words to stick in our brain, no matter what I face, but God remembers. But God remembers. I'm willing for you, God, to remember and restore, repair, replace, and make new in Jesus' name. I'm going to give him praise for just a minute. It's just us. Christine, there's something happening like a chain reaction. Do these belong to you on some level? They're getting a crash course in God's presence. And they're not going to be able to deny how good he is. Don't have to figure it out or understand it. It may sound weird at first. But you're so loved. You're already set apart and destined. That's why life gets tangled sometimes. So God can lift us. I saw a door closing of yesterday and doors opening for a new beginning. Amen. It's all right to be the favorite for a minute, isn't it? Everybody say the blessing of the Lord. It makes rich, but it doesn't add sorrow. Thank you, Lord Aiden. You're stepping into a peaceful time. Is that okay? Things are not easy at times, but you're not by yourself. Not only I have your back, but His Spirit's going to hold you real tight. He's going to make things clear that don't make sense. Future's so bright. You're a Joseph with dreams. They're all going to come to pass. Proud of you for fighting so hard to be a blessing. I claim it in Jesus' name. Can everybody in the room say, I am blessed. I'm already blessed. I'm already chosen. It's time to enjoy it now. Look at your neighbor and tell him, put on a smile. Come on, that's... Yesterday's over. Yesterday's over. You're not picking on her, are you? Amen. She looked like a baby sister of mine from California. The Lord said, just release you into the blessings that he has for you. He loves you so much. He remembers. He knows every hurt, every wrong, every heartache. He knows. But he's going to make it up to you sevenfold. The best is yet to come. God, make life so beautiful. You won't even remember yesterday. Give us peace and hope and a new beginning. Everybody in Jesus' name, say amen. Amen. Did you look at somebody and tell them, I told you everything's going to be all right. Come on, said, I told you everything's going to be all right. Amen. Amen. Glad you're here. It means a lot. We're old friends, like, for a week, right? <laughs> How many know in the family of God, things just happen so quickly? Because God had our lives planned forever. Amen. And when things don't make any sense and your mind is confused about what, how, when, where, why, just sort of relax a little bit. Know that God remembers his promise he's made to you. There's probably promises from past generations that are coming down line. You're the one that's going to benefit, and you're going to act out the faith of, and also other people that hadn't been obedient. But you're going to be the one that brings a blessing to the house. I'm thankful for you. Everybody say amen. 
Amen. Say amen. Can we all say this together? Lord, help me to remember this week that you never forget me. You'll never forsake me. You're with me always and always will be. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We're picking on my brother here from Brother Roy's church in Newark. Anybody ever go to Brother Roy's church in Newark? Oh, you might have one. Tony, if you go, Tony went and his mom family. You're in a transition as well, my friend. And the Lord is saying I'm causing the joy of his presence to dry the tears. Okay? I'm not going to be specific. But you know how much he loves you. You've watched God a thousand times do it all around you and for those you love. But right now, he's just going to hold you. It's going to be a private ceremony. Is that okay? God, a quick work. Faithful for decades. A blessing to make part of this ministry in our family. Do what it did. Have the effect it's had on so many people. Catalyst for blessings. I want you to go to the whole house. Everyone involved in any measure and answer his prayers and remember them. No matter what it looks like, your word said today, but God remembered. He hasn't abandoned you and he hasn't forgotten his word. You're going to remember it as you see it unfold. Come on, let's clap our hands give God the praise and the glory and the honor. Thank you, Lord. You know, sometimes I have you look around at somebody and tell them everything's going to be all right. I want you to tell yourself. This thing I'm going through right now is going to be all right. This thing that I'm facing right now is going to be all right. I'm not going to die. I'm going to live. I'm not going to be bound. I'm going to be free. I'm going to be a blessing to people because God remembers me and he remembers his word. Can we clap our hands and praise him for his word and his promise?